Hey guys, uh, my name is Amit, and today I'm going to be reading the classic story of Rumpelstiltskin, retold by uh, Kate Friend, uh, illustrated by Merrick Zoll, and read by Chris Edlund. Or, well, today read by me, I guess. So let's start this off. Um, Once upon a time, there was a poor miller who lived with his beautiful daughter. One day, he had to go meet with the king to discuss his business. Afraid that the king would not take him seriously, the miller wished to make himself look more important. So he told the king, I have a daughter who can spin straw into gold. The king was immediately interested and thought to himself, if I had the miller's daughter here spinning straw into gold, I would be the richest king in the world. So the king ordered the miller to bring his daughter to the castle that very night. The king put the miller's daughter in a room filled with bales, piles, and stacks of straw. In the middle of the room was a single wooden chair and a spinning wheel. The king said, you must spin all this straw into gold by dawn. If I come back in the morning and there's even a single piece of straw left that has not been turned into gold, you will be put to death. The miller's daughter wept bitterly for she did not know how to spin the straw into gold. As she was weeping and wondering how she would save her life, a little wrinkled, stooped and ugly old man popped up from the floor. In a high croaking voice, he asked the miller's daughter why she was crying. I must spin all this straw into gold, she said, or in the morning I will die. And it is impossible. I do not know how to spin straw into gold. As she fell, in, she fell to weeping anew. What will you give me if I spin the straw into gold for you? Asked the ugly little man. Oh, anything you want, answered the miller's daughter. I want the necklace around your neck, said the ugly little man. So the miller's daughter quickly unfastened the necklace from around her neck and handed it over. The ugly little man hopped up onto a wooden chair and started spinning the straw into gold. By the time the sun broke over the horizon, there was not even a single piece of straw left on the floor. The king was so pleased to see all the gold that the next night he put the miller's daughter into an even bigger room full of even more straw. You must spin all this straw into gold by dawn, he told her again. If I come back in the morning and there is even a single piece of straw left that has not been turned into gold, you will be put to death. The miller's daughter was even more terrified, for she still did not know how to spin straw into gold, and now there were even bigger piles and stacks of straw to spin. As the miller's daughter sat weeping, up popped the ugly little man again. If I spin this straw into gold for you, what will you give me? He asked again. Oh, anything you want, promised the miller's daughter. I want the ring on your finger, the ugly little man said. So the miller's daughter quickly took the ring, her ring off her finger and gave it to the ugly little man. Then she slept through the night while he worked diligently to spin the straw into gold. By the time the sun broke over the horizon, there was not even a single piece of straw left on the floor. The king was so pleased to see all the gold that he thought to himself, I must have the miller's daughter here at the castle all the time. I will marry her and make her my queen. It will not matter that she is a miller's daughter because she will make me the rich, richest king in the world. So he began to make preparations for her the wedding. The next night, the king put the miller's daughter into the biggest room yet, with the biggest piles of straw that she had ever seen. If you can spin all this straw into gold by dawn, I will marry you tomorrow and make you my queen. If there is even a single piece of straw left on the floor by morning, though, you will be put to death. When the king left the room, the miller's daughter cried out, little man, little man, please come help me again, for I'm sure to be put to death this time if you do not come. Up popped the little man, and he said with a twinkle in his beady little eye, I will spin this straw into gold for you, my future queen, if you promise to pay my price. You can have anything you want, said the miller's daughter. I want you to swear on it, said the ugly little man. I swear, said the miller's daughter. Very well. When you are queen, said the ugly little man, and when you bear your first child, that child will be mine. Swear it. The miller's daughter was afraid, but she was more afraid of dying in the morning. And besides, she did not really think she would ever become the queen. I swear it, she promised. So the ugly little man spun all the straw into gold. By the time the sun broke over the horizon, there was not even a single piece of straw left on the floor. The king was as good as his word. The next day, he married the miller's daughter and made her his queen. For a year and a day, they lived happily together, and the queen bore the king a fine baby daughter. 
she had forgotten all about her promise to the ugly little man and spent her days in bliss until the night that the ugly little man popped up from the floor again. My queen, said the ugly little man, you have not made good on your promise. I have come to claim what is mine. The queen trembled with fear, for she now remembered the oath that she had sworn. Tears filled her eyes and she began to weep because she loved, she loved her infant daughter with all her heart and she did not want to give her up. The ugly little man took pity on the queen and told her, I will give you a chance to win your baby back from me. You have three nights to try and guess my name. If on the third night you cannot guess my name correctly, the child will be mine forever. The next day, the queen sent messengers to find out all the names in the palace. The messengers came back with pages and pages of names, from the most important courtiers and advisors to the low lowliest scullery maids and grooms. One by one, the names of every person in the whole palace were written down, while the queen copied them all out in her own neat handwriting in preparation for when the ugly little man would arrive that night. The queen collected all the names and recited them to the ugly little man when he had appeared that night. Jeremiah, David, Timothy, she recited and continued straight through her list. With every name she said, the ugly little man wrinkled up his face so he became even uglier and said, oh, no, that is not my name. When the queen reached the end of her list, the ugly little man gave a cackling laugh. <laughs> Better luck tomorrow, he said, but on the third day, the baby will be mine. The next day, the queen sent messengers to find out all the names in town. Everyone from the mayor to the beggar at the palace door was put on the list. All day long, the messengers brought back pages full of names. And all day long, the queen copied the names into her own neat handwriting into a single list. This time, the list was far longer than the list the night before. And the queen copied and recopied it to make sure she would not accidentally leave off a single name. That night, she recited the names to the ugly little man until the sky began to turn light in, in the east. Crookshanks, bandy legs, hunchback, she recited and continued straight through her list. Again, with every name, the ugly little man wrinkled up his face so he became even uglier and said, Ugh, no, that is not my name. When the, que when, the que when the queen reached the end of her list, the ugly little man cackled and said, Ha, you have not guessed my name yet. You have one more chance and then the baby will be mine. The next day, the queen sent her messengers to the court countryside all around as far as they could walk in a day to collect all the names of all the people in the land. When the sun set, the messengers were still coming in with their lists of names. At last, the, when the queen was sure that the ugly little man was just about to appear, the last messenger stumbled into the door, exhausted with walking. My queen, the messenger said, I wandered up the, towards the mountain passes and wandered long without seeing a single house. Still, I continued on, unwilling to give up until I had found a home and gotten a name. In the forest, I lost my way and wandered until I was in a place that was completely strange to me. I came upon a clearing where there was a strange little hut and a strange little man was dancing around a fire. I stayed hidden in the trees and watched him while he danced. And here is what I heard him singing. Fire burn and oven bake and a merry feast we'll make for the queen will never guess that Rumpelstiltskin is my name. The queen was delighted, and this time she waited for the ugly little man with a smile on her face. When he popped up from the floor out of nowhere again, she began reciting names immediately. Is your name Zechariah, she asked. Ugh, oh, no, said the ugly little man. Your child will be mine for sure. Is your name Jones, asked the queen. Indeed not, said the ugly little man. Pack your baby's things, for I am taking her with me tonight. Well, then I do not know, said the queen, unless your name is Rumpelstiltskin. Rumpelstiltskin grew red in the face and hopped on one foot in rage. Who told you that? The devil must have told you my name, he declared. You are a witch and in league with the devil. It was a lucky guess, insisted the queen, and I will tell you no more about how I guessed it. Be on your way, for I have won the wager and my child will never be yours. Rumpelstiltskin made a spluttering noise in anger, but he could not argue with the truth. So instead, he spun around three times and disappeared in a puff of smoke. The queen and the king lived happily with their child and had many more sons and daughters. Never again had, and never again had to fear that any of them would be stolen away. 
And that is the end of the story. Uh, I hope you all enjoyed the reading.